let's go move past the hiring phase. So I bring somebody on. What are some tips that you could give our listeners? Stuff that they could do in the first 30 or 90 days that some, they have somebody on board to really set them up for success. Like what are some things that we can do? Give me some insight to what that looks like. And I mean, sometimes there are things that we just don't think of, but being in the business, you have an inside track and you can be like, all right, listen, you know, in the first 30 days, you should make sure to do X, Y, Z or whatever it is. Right. So what are some of those things that we should be doing after we hire somebody to really set them up for success and and to hit the ground running? I think the most important one is communication. You know, communication is key. And as long as you communicate with that person in terms of expectations, in terms of, I always say, even if they come with the experience, they need to learn your business. Like, how does your, how do you run your business internally, right? How do you like things? Because we like things in different ways, right? Same outcome, but different ways to get there. So I always say like, it's important to share those things with them so they understand the expectations. They understand what's the the flow internally in the company and understand that there's always a learning process and that in like the first week, there's going to be training. There's everything's going to be a little bit slower, right? But the second week is going to be faster and the third week is going to be better and a month later, you're going to start seeing like, oh my gosh, okay, this is working out, right? I'm, I can see the efficiency. I can see this person is very proactive. So um, communication and the understanding that learning you know, process um, is very, very important to guarantee the success of, of the, you know, the, the strategy or, or the process. I would, I would say those are the main ones. Other than that is providing the right uh, tools, right? The right information and working together with um, your whole team. This is not about replacing anyone internally. Um, This is about, hey, how can you transfer some operational tasks that someone in your team stateside is having that is taking so much time away from them And how can another person that is, you know, lower cost and um, available, how can they help and how can they do it? How they can take care of that operational part. So your person is stateside can focus on more strategic things, right? Or more viable things that they can do here. And, you know, that the operational part is being done by another person, but it's cheaper for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, communication is, is important. Also giving them the right tools for the for the job. Is another one. One thing that I think is, is important is to really give clarity around what the expectation is for their deliverable. Like what are they responsible to to accomplish? and putting some real numbers around it. So, you know, if there's a certain task that they're doing and they need to do a certain quantity of that task, you're setting that expectation of what that is. And also checking in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, how are they doing? And and giving feedback, allowing them to become better at what they do by providing that feedback. You know, often we just kind of let things coast along and we let something bother us, but we don't say anything. And it festers, right? It becomes worse because we're just letting it sit there. You really, you have the ability to get in front of it, get ahead of it by just communicating that. There's a great book called Radical Candor by Kim Scott. And that book, she she talks about this, this idea of, you know, being upfront with your staff and, and, you know, letting them know that and how to properly tell them that they did something wrong or something is not up to up to the quality that you want in a way that motivates them to do better the next time, allows them to fix it, gives them an opportunity to step into the best version of themselves instead of 
you just saying, ah, oh, this is not working. I'm just going to do it myself. Um, and that's really a trap that a lot of us fall into is when, you know, we try to outsource something to somebody, we try to hand it, hand off a task. And this is nothing to do with nearshore or offshore. This is, you know, this could be just anybody. Like I hire an attorney, I could have the same problem. The attorney just doesn't do it the way that I wanted it done. So at that juncture, we have two options. One is I take it back and do it myself. And the other is we take the time and we show them how we want it. We show them what the problem is. We show them why that why our way is the way that we want to do it so that they can have an opportunity the next time to, to rise up and, and do better.